use headphones for best experience. Listen audio only to some of my content. So type in Asmarctica, Asmar, and you will find it out there. Hi. Welcome to another video. Today I would like to write some alphabets no longer in use, some ancient writing systems, and um, I will use this piece wax tablet that I created a while ago. I have a, cup, a couple of them here, and if you're interested in how these are made, I can put a link in the description to the tutorial video on YouTube that I watched to learn how to create this. It's nice, I think, to like carve into wax like this, and I imagine that's how scribes did, especially when they learned the alphabets and the writing systems. When they had to practice, they didn't use uh, re very expensive or durable um, material, I suppose. But then they could use these wax tablets and write again and again and erase and like sketching before, yeah paper wasn't in use. They were like uh, papyrus in ancient Egypt, but I guess they were quite difficult to produce. Um, but I've been reading about ancient writing systems. I find it super interesting. Mm, because I want to like get a better knowledge about the origins of uh, the alphabet we're using today in, in, for example, the English language, the Latin alphabet, and uh, also the Cyrillic alphabet and the Greek alphabet, they're all related, and uh, you can trace them back to, to a common ancestor, but uh, the longer you trace them back in time, the more diffuse and unclear the um, uh, relation becomes, so it's not super easy to see why this letter looks like this and not like this, and why this uh, why this letter should be pronounced like this and not like this. It's interesting, but also very... It's a lot to, to learn and to read about, and uh, a bit frustrating sometimes, because, I don't know, I just want... <laughs> I feel I have an urge to, to know these things. Um, and uh, I just have to accept that it's not it's not clear at all. There is a lot of speculation and guesses and scholars arguing about what uh, theory is, um, is uh, the one to believe in. But anyway, I find two scripts, 
ancient scripts are really interesting. It's the uh, Phoenician alphabet, and it's the ancient South Arabian alphabet. The Phoenician alphabet I find super interesting because it's the ancestor of the the Greek alphabet, the Cyrillic alphabet, and the Latin alphabet. Also, the Aramaic alphabet and um, the Hebrew alphabet, the Arabic uh, script. So, there are a lot of, of um, writing systems that you can derive. There are even more, more. I just mentioned some of them now, but there are really a lot of alphabet still used today that can be traced back to the Phoenician alphabet. Um, so before I start to talk about other writing systems, I think I, I will start to write the Phoenician alphabet so you can see what it how it looks what it looks like. And I'll zoom in a bit.
So first we have Alep Bet Kiml Talet He Wow Zayin sure about the exact pronunciation. Um, it's something like that. Let's see if I can, can uh, uh, read it a bit uh, faster. Alep, bet, kimel, dalet, he, wow, zain, is pronounced more like uh, uh, rather than r and this could be both seen and sheen not sure and um, the Phoenician alphabet was used uh, during the first millennium BCE so, something like uh, 1050 BCE to 150 BCE. And um, that it was no longer in use after 150 BCE, I guess, is because this language, Phoenician, or this script, Phoenician script, was used by the Phoenicians. And, um, um, there were these uh, these uh, famous wars in um, 149 to 146 BCE, the Third Punic War between Carthage and Rome, and uh, Carthage was uh, totally destroyed after these wars. And um, after that, I guess. They stopped using these types of letters and uh, continued to use the Latin letters invented by the Romans or developed by the Romans. And today we also have the Arabic alphabet in these areas, northern Africa, where Carthage was located. But the Phoenician alphabet was uh, originally from um, from Phoenicia in the uh, Levant in the Middle East today's uh, Lebanon, Syria those areas um, and um, this must have been a really popular alphabet that they developed there because um, 
so many uh, other languages around the Mediterranean uh, and even more to the east of the Levant um, started to borrow this alphabet and copy it and make um, create new versions of it to to fit their languages so that's why we have similar letters both in Latin like I mentioned before the Latin alphabet the Greek alphabet the Cyrillic alphabet um, so it was really yeah because the Phoenician moved around a lot they were they traveled a lot and uh, um, and trade trade things like that um, and had co they had colonies all around the Mediterranean Sea, especially at the southern shore, like uh, today's uh, Tunis. And that's where that's where the Carthage the city was located, modern Tunis, Tunisia. Um, but yeah, uh, where did the Phoenicians uh, got? The these shapes from uh, probably from um, from a script that is not preserved a lot you you have there are some evidence that there was a uh, um, earlier script called the proto sinaitic script or proto canaanite script uh, i'll refer to it as a proto sinaitic script here uh, found in uh, Egypt close to the Nile River and also in the Sinai Peninsula in the desert there in some mines uh, turquoise mines um, and also I think the oldest evidence of this script are from Egypt and Sinai Peninsula so then there are later evidence of the script in like in the Levant as well Middle East um, but I read a lot about the um, those earliest founds of this um, this proto-Sinaitic script and that script was uh, the transition between Egyptian hieroglyphs to the Phoenician alphabet and it was probably used around 1800 BCE to 1500 BCE something like that so it was um, several hundred years before the Phoenician alphabet was in use in the uh, second Millennium BCE. Um, so it was very inspired by the Egyptian hieroglyphs, some Egyptian hieroglyphs, but not related in meaning or anything like that because the languages were completely different. The Proto Sinaitic script um, was used in a Semitic language. The Phoenician language was also a Semitic language. Um, Hebrew. Uh, Arabic are Semitic languages in use today. Um, but the Egyptian language is another branch of the Afro-Asiatic language family or group. So um, scholars uh, think that um, they, uh, those who created the Proto-Sinaitic script borrowed uh, hieroglyphs and gave them sounds, just sounds, not meaning. Um, for example, this was originally the head of an ox, that, that uh, hieroglyph. Then it simplified and uh, 
and used for the sound glottal stop called Alep and probably Alep meant ox, uh, something that had to do with the, the head of an ox or head of cattle in that um, early Semitic language so this principle is called acrophony when you take the first letter of a word or you, you take a picture of, a, of an item and the first sound you hear in that word will become a letter representing a sound only um, and uh, bet is probably the hieroglyph for a house or a reed uh, shelter seen from above so the the semitic speaking uh, people they are probably a word reminding of bet for this object the house gimel is believed to be a throwing stick gamel also um, uh, that was used um, in hunting uh, especially in Egypt around this time uh, you throw a stick to to hunt birds for example and the talet could be a door door of a tent possibly he or some believe that it uh, came from the, the word hilul jubilation could be a hieroglyph of a person a man standing raising his hands but then it has been flipped so those hands are, are like pointing to the left here but in the beginning of the of the um, writing systems history letters could be flipped a lot it wasn't because I think the reason is because they were not like written in lines like this they were written round and you know on on vessels and amphoras and ceramic items and um, they could also be written from left to right or from right to left and they could flip like be mirrored so this he or hilul letter could be could be flipped depending on which direction you you read the text I'll look up a word what it what it's called it's uh, called uh, bostrophidon when uh, when you write maybe you start from the left and follow a line to the right and then you you start the next row to from the right and uh, read and write to the left and then the letters are flipped so you can really see they're like rotating and and flip flipped letters all the time in the beginning So, where were we? Yeah, I think this one wasn't called Hilul in in uh, Phoenician language. It was called He. Hilul was a, is a maybe earlier. Um, and 
a wow, could be a hook of some kind, the Egyptian hieroglyph for a hook. Um, Sayin could be a weapon or manacle. Het could be a courtyard, possibly. Um, chet could be a wheel or the hieroglyph for a good or the hieroglyph nefer, nefer. Um, that was a symbol for goodness somehow. Um, and yod usually or originally depicted an arm. So you can see the the arm and the two fingers, perhaps. And um, yeah, also an hieroglyph, the forearm, and uh, cap is probably the palm of a hand, also a hieroglyph, and uh, it's both because these guesses are because both because the shape you can actually see that this could be palm of a hand with fingers very simplified but also the the name of the letter cap it still means palm of a hand in some semitic languages and uh, lamed could be a goad for hieroglyphs for Goats and mem is probably water. You can see the waves here, ripples. Nun is probably a snake, serpent. Could be the cobra hieroglyph originally. And uh, Samic It's a bit tricky, but um, could be Pillar or the Jed Hieroglyph And Ein is probably the Eye Hieroglyph, depicting an eye Because Hein, I guess, still means I in some Semitic languages. And the Pe could be mouth originally or corner. Or some guesses. And Sade could be papyrus plant or fish hook, perhaps. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, refer to it as the papyrus plant. There was also a papyrus plant hieroglyph. There were so many hieroglyphs you can choose from. And the uh, cop could be a needle eye, perhaps, or perhaps a cord of wool. And um, Resh is probably a head, human head. Very simplified here, because Resh still means head in Semitic, some Semitic languages. And Sin or Shin could be Sun, perhaps. And uh, this doesn't look much like a sun, but then you can keep in mind that the Egyptians often depicted the sun on top of um, the head of some deities, like a crown, 
uh, and then it was um, round like a sun but it also had the cobra like clinging to it or yes yeah, so like a uh, like a, a circle shape for the sun and then a cobra with the head and then the the most of the body following the top of the sun and then the tail out from from the other side of the sun so it could be like this so the head of the cobra the sun and then the tail and this very common symbol was called the uraeus or something like that uraeus mm, the sun and cobra combined And uh, Taf could be uh, owner's mark. Um, it reminds me a bit of the Egyptian hieroglyph uh, circle with a cross. Um, also this one does, of course. This is a uh, Tet. So some kind of T sound. This is tough. And this developed into the emphatic T. So a like harder T or or um, how to call it? Darker T. And this is more to the front. Um So yeah, owner's mark or or yeah, I started to think about this hieroglyph meaning city or town or geographical place in in Egyptian hieroglyphs. Anyway. You can see that um this reminds of an A, letter A if you flip it quite a lot and this reminds a G G G in both Greek and Cyrillic alphabets not so much in the Latin alphabet and this one may be a D and a E it's uh, not difficult at all to see how how these letters became the Latin letters and other letters uh, especially if you take a look at the archaic Greek alphabet, old versions of the Greek alphabet, then they look even more like the Phoenician alphabet. Also some letters have been dropped since that were in the archaic Greek alphabet, for example wow, um, and some other Sade, mm, Sade uh, letter became something called Sun letter in archaic Greek alphabet. Also, Coppa was part. Coppa was part of the the archaic Greek alphabet, but not in the modern Greek alphabet. Um, and then uh, it doesn't stop at T. Modern alphabets uh, uh, often have the same order, quite the same order as, as the Phoenician, but then if the, the language has a lot of sounds they want to have their own, invent their own new symbols for, those are quite often placed at the end of the alphabet. So the Phoenician alphabet had only 22 letters. And originally they they represented only consonants, so the vowels were weren't really invented in writing systems yet. Uh, the Greeks gave some of these shapes vowel values instead of some kind of uh, consonant sounds that they didn't had any use for. For example. Alep, the glottal stop. Ah, 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 ah. That 
sound. They didn't need that, so they gave this the sound, the vowel sound, ah, instead. Uh, H, 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 H. Uh, it happened the same thing with this letter. Um, some Greek dialects didn't need the sound, or they didn't have the sound in their language, so that they didn't need this um, letter for that sound. So it became the E sound instead. E vowel. And the AIN consonant, that consonant sound, they didn't have any use for, so they they uh, had this symbol for the O, O sound instead. For example, and um, yeah, uh, maybe I should start to talk a bit about the ancient South Arabian script. So it's an another script, but it was used approximately during the same time as the Phoenician script. So in the first part of the first millennium BC, um, maybe 9th to 6th century BC, or even earlier perhaps, um, and this alphabet, this uh, script system, was used more to the south, geographically. So here we have Egypt, where a lot of these uh, characters derive from, the hieroglyphs. This is the Sinai Peninsula, where a lot of, or some proto-Sinaitic inscriptions are found, were found, that probably were from from uh, 1800s BC or something like that. Here also uh, has been found um, some proto-Sinaitic script. And here, then it's called proto canaan Canaanite script. Um, but yeah, if uh, the the Phoenician alphabet uh, evolved here somewhere uh, in the tenth, eleventh century BC. Then the same happened here to the south, the south ancient th South Arabian script, probably 11th or 12th, uh, 11th or 10th century BC. So it was a parallel development. And this alphabet here, through trade and a lot of contacts here, it um, it uh, was borrowed and used by um, the Greeks and the Romans. And the Cyrillic script was developed here in Bulgaria. This South Arabian, ancient South Arabian script is also really interesting because it's written in another, in another sequence. So it's not starting with 
with the A, B, G, D. It starts actually with H, H, L, another H, and M, H, L, H, M. And why there are two H, uh, maybe that's a bit strange, but uh, yeah, it's because back then those represented two different sounds and two different characters. It's just because we're now talking in Latin script context and then both those characters and sounds are H, considered to be a variation of H. So that's why you can refer to it as the HLHM sequence today. And I think it's so fascinating to imagine how, what if the HLHM uh, sequence would have been the the more uh, leading one, so that the Greeks would have borrowed that alphabet with that sequence instead of the A B G G sequence. Then we would not know what A B C D was today. Then we w we would probably say. E L H M or something like that. <laughs> e L E L H M. The first uh, four letters of the alphabet. Then I have replaced the first H with an e vowel E. But anyway, I'll start to write the ancient. South Arabian script.
So here we have the South Ancient, oh sorry, Ancient South Arabian script. And here we have He Lamed He. Also, be the 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 alveolar sibilant fricative. It's very unclear all these variations of s sounds. There are a lot of different sounds that today we only say s or spell it with s h, for example. Sh. Uh, so, in the Latin alphabet, we don't have all these sibilant sounds represented by a, by a, by its own letters so it's a bit problematic sometimes to figure out what sounds these were because they're all, they're pronounced very close to each other but there we had uh, uh, and Rech uh, Bet Tau Sat and again could be Shat or Chat perhaps but if this is Shin no if this is Shin this could be Sat No, sorry. I'll change my mind again. If this is lean, they often they're just referred to as S1, S2, and S3, and you have to decide yourself what uh, what uh, what you think is the value for it, the sound value. Also, it could be the same sound. Uh, quite often that happens. That sounds originally used in an alphabet stopped being used. So then this two different characters are pronounced exactly the same but uh, I'll pronounce this thin and this sat shut I mean um, sorry here we have cup and here we have noon That's more recognizable, kappa, la, and noon. Here we have chet. Yet another H type of sound. The uh, velar fricative, voiceless. in these areas where these languages were spoken could be like ejective consonant so it could be like tz, tz, something like that ejective s and um, samic and uh, this is one of the three s sounds 
not clear how it was pronounced, but um, yeah, I pronounce this as a as the sibilant s. And um, then we have fe, and we have aleph, and hein. and dot in this language there is a theory that it could be the emphatic version of sheen so some type of adjective lateral sibilant sound maybe something like that really not sure you had to guess. And um, Gimel and Dalet and Rhein uh, and uh, Tre. Emphatic T. So if it's adjective T, if the emphatic consonants are adjective in this uh, language, languages using this script, then it could be like t, 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 and adjective T sound. And next we have. Zain Z sound and uh, then we have Dalet the the the, the fricative dental fricative the, 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 the voiced dental fricative so Dalet and we have Yod and Thou, the voiceless dental fricative Th. And the emphatic voiceless dental fricative related to this one, Th, but uh, pharyngealized or probably adjective so would be my attempt to pronounce this letter um, but for example in modern Arabic it would be the um, za letter this would be uh, let's see which one is the dot? It would be. It would be this one. Dot. Za. And there are two more emphatic letters in Arabic. It's the sad. That was this one. Sad. And T should also be emphatic here. This could be TA in modern Arabic. So the I can repeat the H sounds again. We have HE. And the 
S sounds clean shut thought or adjective thought and uh, some Super easy to translate to Latin letter names, actually. Not all of them, as you can see. So, how many letters were there? There were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and all of them are consonants so there are a lot of consonants in the Phoenician there were only 22 so if there were a common ancestor to both these uh, languages or um, writing systems a proto-Sinaitic language with a, uh, an alphabet it could have uh, at least 29 consonant letters. Probably didn't have any vowel letters, since no evidence they were used this early. It was the Greeks who probably invited those. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting to see both an alternative sequence of letters. So what uh, what if uh, our alphabet today in we uh, were using the the Latin alphabet if we were to start with E L H M Q W S R B T C or something uh, K N if that was the sequence all everyone knew about. Um, and also, if we had more 
consonant letters if we had uh, like um, preserved uh, some of those dental fricatives uh, have their their own letters and don't ha so we didn't had to like write it using two letters or three letters um, so I, I think it's fascinating to imagine how it could have been um, when you look at these ancient alternative alternatives to to uh, the modern writing system And um, also we we have um, why these two um, writing systems became so big in during this time, uh, early first millennium BC. It's probably because we have the late Bronze Age collapse around 1200 BC, where a lot of writing systems and culture using completely different uh, writing systems were completely destroyed the Mycenaean culture with the linear l linear B writing system that's not related at all to hieroglyphs or I, I think it's not related to hieroglyphs but at, at least not to, to these Semitic, Semitic uh, writing systems um, it was completely lost and those uh, writing systems were not used after the late Bronze Age collapse, but then, after a couple of hundreds of years, uh, these two writing systems, among with others, started to develop. And um, I haven't mentioned that, but uh, the the South ancient South Arabian script actually evolved into scripts that are used today in Ethiopia and Eritrea, for example. Uh, the Ge'ez language, uh, but that's basically today j only liter what do you say, uh, church language. Um, but the modern language is um, uh, Amharic and uh, Tigrinya, I think it's called, uh, two languages of Eritrea and Ethiopia that are millions of speakers um, with their own script deriving from this script you can really see a lot of characters um, that has have evolved from this script uh, it's not an alphabet today they have uh, evolved into syllables this, um, ab uh, what is this called abugad abugida another kind of writing system type of writing system and set of characters so there are a lot of characters more than 20 30 that is used in these types of abjads or alphabets there are like more maybe 100 100 uh, 100 uh, different characters and it's uh, syllables so it's a one consonant and a vowel just like the japanese katakana and hiragana systems but you can see that the basic shape actually derives from the, the South Arabian uh, South Arabian script and um, there also you, you find some clues of what sounds these these uh, characters could have had there are some types of adjective consonants uh, in the G is derived scripts like um, Amharic and Tigrinya for example I can put a link to a video where where they go through the entire GS script and the letters so you can check if you're interested mm. and um, the uh, um, Amharic and uh, uh, Ge'ez and um, Tigrinya languages they are using actually this this H L H M sequence for their writing system so 
it's really cool that you can see that uh, the south, the the sequence uh, deriving from the South Arabian branch of the Semitic languages, um, are still in use. Uh, I can show you quick, quickly here. This is from uh, Wikipedia about Amharic. Uh, 30 th 32 million native speakers. So it's an uh, alpha syl syllabary with many variations of the same um, uh, root uh, consonant H. And you can see the shape here. Um, reminds a bit of this part of this letter. It's not super clear, but here you can see it's uh, turned upside down. The um, the uh, other H letter. Uh, or theme. Today in Amharic, I guess it's uh, pronounced just s, s, also flipped. Um, sat. Uh, I call it shat, but here we can see it's today also pronounced just s. Same basic shape. T cross here. Yeah. which I think means snake in Semitic language, some Semitic language. And this wow letter. It's not exactly the same sequence, but it start at least it start H L H M and there are some letters added P for example and an adjective version P P P J you can clearly see Oh, it reminds of this one. And if you take a look at the map, here's a Wikipedia article about Afroasiatic languages. You can see that the Semitic branch of it it's because it's mostly desert. Egypt, Libya, Algeria, Tunisia, Morocco, Mauritius. 
Church in Mauritania. Um, and here you can see Amharic and uh, Tigrinya, also Tigre, Tigre. Three languages spoken in the very south of this vast area. So it's in today's uh, uh, Eritrea and Ethiopia. The other language group uh, spoken here is uh, the Cushitic languages and the Omotic languages and the Egyptian the ancient Egyptian language would if if it would have been spoken today but it's uh, it's not uh, spoken anymore since since the uh, I don't know 2000 years ago or something like that um, after the Roman conquest um, it would have been uh, sixth division here, so it was a branch of the Afro-Asiatic language group, the Egyptian language. But now Egypt is spoken, is a Semitic spoken area, the Arabic language spoken here. But yeah, here we are, so here we have Alphabets using the HLHM sequence. I just wanted to show you. I think it's really cool. Maybe we can just see if we can see similarities between between the letters here. So we have this is G or Camel. Looks very similar to this one, but this is actually L. L and G are very look alike. So here we have the the South Arabian version of it, and here's the Phoenician version of G. Let's take L. Here we have the Phoenician. And here's the South Arabian. T. In Phoenician. What became T? Uh, it's easier for me to, to call them the, the Latin. The later Latin letters derived from them. So G and uh, in South Arabian alphabet we have it here. This triangular shape here as well. Um, A we have here. Not super clear, it's, it's, it's a common ancestor. But it should be from um, uh, originally depicting an ox, the head of an ox. You can see that here quite easily. Horns, the face. Not as clear here. Uh, B. And this is a house, probably. This looks more like a house. The South Arabian B. 
skyscraper and uh, E originally H yeah, here you can see the Egyptian hieroglyph I talked about that probably was the origin of this letter someone raising his hands up in the sky and uh, this is uh, wow the hook oh, not so similar z should be this one Quite similar. Mm. But, um, another H, the second H. Uh, not super clear. Emphatic T. Yes. At least it's like a closed shape surrounding it. And the, the South Arabian script is very square. Very um, suitable for carving, I guess. Straight lines. And then we have a Yod or J. If you think of it as a, if you think about the origin, uh, an arm, shoulder, an arm, and a hand, uh, it could be the same origin here, hand, arm, and hand. Okay, the palm of the hand. of the lines this one we've already took that and then M you can see the waves in another direction they're like tilted and I showed you before. Nahas. Samik. Mm, this is very straight lines. These are very diagonal lines. Ein. It's just sh shrinked. Mini version. Yeah, but th th it's not like the this alphabet has derived from this one. It's like, like I said, two branches of uh, the common ancestor. Um, P. And yeah, there are no F sound, F letter in. So I think uh, no P letter in the South Arabian script. So I think we have to look for the F here. But yeah, not super obvious relation. Sad. No, which one is sad here? Say I can see a relation there. Kof. You can really see the relation here. Resh. The F. 
face, the neck. Yeah, this could be just anything, but maybe face, part of the face. Sheen, sheen, or sheen. Yeah, there's this one. And uh, tough. 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 So, what do you say? Quite clearly, they're related, these scripts. sequence to look for the equivalent character. I think that was all I wanted to talk about today and to show you. Thank you so much for watching and for listening. I hope you found it relaxing and interesting. Mm-hmm.